Here we are. Yeah, yeah, play the thing. Except don't. So, last we left off, I'd done all the seven gyms. I now have the rare, rare opportunity of being in the wrong city. Well, um, guess that just means I can go over here instead. Should have plenty of time. I think the worst case is that it turns tonight at 6pm, but I thought it was a bit late in that. Um, I need to pick up some Pokemons. So, we no longer need you. Oh, we have Bab on us anyway. Keep Fat Moon. Despite him having the stupidest name. And we take a long wing job. Which also has a stupid name. I mean, at this rate, it's just... Literally just a... Um, a trend of bad names. Uh, I need to check that Bab actually does have leech life. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it then. I'll raise your Bab. You kindly. Now we fly back to Mahog. Actually, we didn't really need to do that. <gasps> what? He's gone! We can get Tangler! Okay. That's cool. I thought... That was weird. I, I didn't think that he'd just randomly vanish like that. Maybe I should keep this as a bay leaf. Love this music. Of the best roots in the game. Just far oh uh, sorry, I sense it. Accidentally said sorry while mispronouncing ferret and centra. <laughs> uh, give me a lick of tongue. We know he's here. I think he's here. Screw it. It's worth looking these things up before I end up spending an hour looking in this route. It's route 44. It's not this route, it's the next route. I thought Tangela and Nicotang were both on the same route, and they are. It's both on route 44, the one which I am not currently on. So here's me being an idiot. So not really, because I did have the full book to check. Whoa, okay. I didn't expect that would um one shot it. Um actually yeah, I may as well keep the XP share on him. Flat Moon is, I guess, an honorary member of the team, at least for now. Don't fight that trainer. Fucking. I got lured by the item. Too greedy.
That's pretty good damage, I'll be honest. Gonna hand it to Flat Moon. He's not bad. Let's send out Kadab. Well, I've got the perfect counter for that. It's Ricardo. I suspect, yeah, Ricardo will win the speed tie. Well, not the speed tie, but the speed contest. You get what I mean. That's a nice amount of XP for such an easy kill. Yes, come on. It's all cutting into our time that we can be spending finding my liquor time. He's harmless, he doesn't look round. Stares at the water. Water. Oh, good. First try for Tangler. That's pretty good. Eh. Uh, do I want this one, though? My experience has been that the first one you encounter always kind of sucks. Well, it seems to be mostly annoying. I said mostly. Seems to be annoying. Oh, good. Oh, good. They can just run. Can they? Uh, I guess I'd better put up something a little bit more hard-hitting, then. If I don't want them running. I don't really care about Max Revive, to be honest. Oh, good. Yes. Um, I really wish that Tangle hadn't run, actually. It would have saved me time. I can use any item to get... I can give the Crit Claw to... Nighthawk. Not wonderfully useful on him. Give Protein to... Cardo. He'll benefit from it. He's staying on the team. Okay, but that's not either of the Pokemon I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Oof. I'm liking this new, um audio setup. It's not responding to me clicking my controller at all. Oh shit. How did we outspeed? Yes! Oh, I love that! Just instantly flee from me! Just fuck off out of here! That this game. Raising my hopes, but nothing. Hey, there he is. That's all we're looking for, to be honest. Just so long as he doesn't run, we're good. We can come back any time for a... There we go. 
for a tangies tangler. But this thing. This thing, for some reason, can only be found in the daytime. Which is a real thorn in my side, because I like to stream at night. Right. So long as he don't run, this should be a cinch. Of course, I don't have a name set aside for him. Alright, put him back to sleep. Stop the Ultra Balls. Why else am I going to use them on? Legendary dogs? Oh, one already ran away from me. There we go. How long can I make it? Keeping up the trend of terrible names. Alright. And now we look for a Tangular. That was easy. Come on. I just hope that this thing has decent individual values or whatever they're called in this game. Unlocked like it, to be honest. It's taking more damage from Peck than it did last time. Which is definitely not a good sign. Oh good, well now we're asleep. Let's just chuck balls. I don't want to risk it running away. Boom. And the team is complete for now. Um. There we go. At least that name makes a bit more sense than when I called the freaking crocodile Vinny. And now let's fly on our sleeping Pokemon. Because that makes sense. We're done here. It's time to deal with Team Rockets. Question is, do I want to fetch Togepi? Do I even want to use Togepi? Not really. It's worse in almost every way to Nighthawk. Egg. And I don't know what I'd replace. Unless I've just stopped using Megalon. I suppose I don't need Flat Moon at the moment. So, let's teach him some moves. Sucky sucky get surf. Now our designated surf. Uh, Supersonic's garbage. All of those moves are pretty terrible actually. But I didn't get him for the move set. So, where's Egg? Egg. 
Get out of here. Vine source do anything at the moment. Just a vine whip. This moveset isn't great. That's a pretty good special attack. But then it's actual attack. I'm wanting to give vine source a chance. Let's go into the mark. Floor sells the TMs. Not this one. Well, I can still sell some garbage. That. Two nuggets. That's good. I literally never use guard specs or anything like that. But I used the protein. I probably shouldn't have. God damn, X accuracies go for lots. Why are they so pricey? Uh, nothing else I have is going to do it. Oh well, I just have to hope I've got enough. What do you sell, sir? You sell garbage. Okay. Those were actually cheaper than I expected. Uh, headbutt. Just in case. I don't know what I'd teach it to. So. Question is fire punch and either thunder punch or ice punch. But which one? Which one should I teach to all the members of chat that I don't have? Who can learn Sludge Bomb? Vine Source. Okay. I'll think about it. Good move for him. Headbutt. Anything can learn Headbutt. Be better than stomp. Eh, eh. Actually, tell you what, I'll teach you to egg. Egg is struggling with moves. What do you have? Crouch. Oh, sweet kids. Right. When did he learn a fourth move? Only problem with sludge bomb is that I only get one, so if I regret teaching it to Vine Source. No going back. And his attack is underwhelming. Definitely special attack is the primary stat of Tanglers. So we've got Ice Punch or Thunder Punch. I feel like water types are more of an issue, generally. Mind you, I have the grass type for... Yeah, hmm. Maybe I should go for ice punch. Ah, oh, well. I can always swap it round, can't I? Right, and he still has defense curl, so there goes that. And now he has a decent moveset. Decent-ish. So I'm going to pause again. I know it's annoying. But I want to look up Tangela's moveset. Which I should have done before the stream, I know. I just want to know what can he learn. 
And the answer is not all that much. Sludge Bomb is probably one of the best moves it can learn, to be honest. Can learn Growth. Growth could be good. In fact, ooh, ooh, I'm liking a move set. I'm thinking up. Sunny day, growth. Hang on, hang on. Let's just growth. Okay. Wait, it doesn't... Oh, yeah, it doesn't increase attack and special attack. It only increases special... Oh. Okay. Well, that was a nice dream. Hmm. It's not like it learns synthesis anyway. Well... I was just thinking Sunny Day, Growth, Solar Beam, doesn't really need synthesis. And then Sludge Bomb, I guess. Or maybe just Mega Drain. I mean, it'd probably benefit from having some kind of healing move. Doesn't need to be synthesis. It can just be um, draining the other Pokemon. And of course, with growth, it would get the boost rather than not getting any bo boost from Sludge Bomb. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I've changed my mind. Yeah. Gligo can learn Sludge Bomb. So if I use that, I'd want it on that. Gligo has a way better attack stat than Tangler, I think. I would assume so. What's Tangler's actual attack stat? 55? Yeah, okay. Gligo's attack stat is, probably, is like pretty decent. It does mean that Tangler won't have any really good moves at the moment. But, what? Hold on. Uh, what are you talking Are you streaming right now? Yes. You should get Rock Smash, if anyone. I had to do something early. I could give it to him over Tail Whip. Rock Smash pretty much does the same thing as Tail Whip. Okay, it's a chance of dropping the defense rather than guaranteed. But... I think Dynamic Punch should be given. Hmm... Don't give Rock Smash... Well, I mean, Rock Smash is only temporary. I can buy more TMs. I can overwrite it. What's the harm in teaching him? I don't think I'm going to have a... H well, my HM Slave is the... Um, the man type. With all of the water HMs. Yeah, but I'm not using Quagsire, I'm using Mantine. It's not like Rock Smash is all that useful, or you know, all that needed. It's just... If I can teach it over Tail Whip... It's objectively better than Tail Whip. Yes or no, it's objectively better than Tail Whip. Rock Smash is objectively better than Tail Whip. And then Dynamic Punch I can conserve for later when I decide who I'm going to teach to. Maybe it will be Ricardo. Maybe it'll be no one. Maybe I think I'll change my mind and think, no, I don't want a fighting move on Ricardo at all. I just like having my options open for when the game gets more challenging. Anyway, you probably missed my two new team members. Say hello, at last, to my Lickitung. Turns out that, um, 
despite all of my complaints about only being able to get this thing at day, this was the first stream where I was actually able to get it day or night because it was needing Route 44 like the Tangler. And I only noticed that the guy who blocked the entrance to that route had vanished at the start of this stream. So that would have been awkward if I'd gone through all this effort to stream early and not been able to get to that route. But here's the Tangler as well. And I haven't teached... I was tempted to teach Vine Source the Tangler Sludge Bomb. But Tangler's attack stat is miserable. Anyway, um, let's check if we've got an egg yet. Is that yes? Is that yes? <gasps> is that yes? Already? Like, wow. Are we going to have to do a hatching stream? Yeah, might as well. Okay then. That was fast. I only just put them in. Yeah, they really got it on, didn't they? It's somewhat disturbing because um, the venom out was level 25, but the anima was only level 12. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that. <laughs> cost me nothing to not say that. But I have to go ahead and you know, talk my smutty mouth. I have to just let my mouth run away with me. Pokemon's arm. Make my togepi, make my egg beautiful, please. Again, would have cost you nothing to stay silent and not say that. Alright, um, now it's time to go up and down. Do you like going up and down? I sure like going up and down. Up and down several thousand times while we wait for the egg to hatch and Togepi to get happy. So how was your day? How was the weather over where you are? You just woke up. That's considerably less bad than if I had just woke up, given that you're like six hours ahead of me. Kind of cold, but decent. Funnily enough, that's almost exactly what it's like in Britain. It's sunny, but because of the high winds we've had all day, it's quite chilly. Which is my kind of weather. I don't like it when it's too hot. I need to add some better Twitch TV or whatever emoji emotes to my channel so that you can spam them instead of... Well, it's not like you actually spam all that many emotes anyway, but... Better you spamming emotes than the usual trash and shit posts. <laughs> Took the GameCube controller Well, you probably ought to be studying then. Leave me on in the background like a radio. Like Ninja used to do before he... He got new things to do and stopped turning up. <laughs> I 
but yeah, you may have noticed there are new emoji on the Discord. So hopefully you get some use, some fun out of them. There's one for Dave, the girder. There's one for your favourite Pokemon, Slacking. There's one for your favourite Pokemon, Kingler. And there's one for your favouritist Pokemon, Chingling. As well as a Bidoof. There's a Surfing Bulbasaur because of one tiny little miss saying that I made. That I turned into a big joke in my highlights video that probably nobody will get because nobody watched that video. Because you all suck. Put so much effort into my videos and then you're like, Well, I just want to watch your streams. I don't want to watch videos. How about this? How about I use slacking in Gen 3? Because, I'll be honest, I don't think I ever have used it. Because I hate the goddamn ability. And I'm going to loathe it when I use it in Gen 3. But hey, I'll put up with it. I'll put up for, with it for one game. One normal, unmodded, mostly easy Gen 3 game. I don't always have to use underrated Pokemon. It's only because Gen 1 and Gen 2 are really easy. I mean, granted, this game has only been easy so far because I've kind of blasted through it with the Geodude slash Graveler. But at the same time, isn't that kind of the point? I've literally had a team of shitmons and complimented them with a random Graveler that I haven't even kept up to level with the rest of the team. And I've been steamrolling through gyms. Yeah, Tyrantron has nothing to do with the stream. I just like it, and I probably would use it in um, a Gen 6 run. Some of them are random. I think there's a Sneasel one, and I like I just like that one because it's it looks smug. It looks, you know, the Sneasel em emoji that I added looks smugger than the Snivy one that I didn't add. This is despite the name Smugleaf. Anyway, these are all from Pokemon Shuffle, I think. Not that I play that game, but hey, it's a good source for easy emoji. Oh, fan why would I add Fampy? What does Fampy have to do with the stream? PMP. Oh. Oh, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I take that back. I just don't like Fampy all that much. And even in PMD, the fan B is just there. Okay, it's us. It's our Pokemon. Player Pokemon. Player character, whatever you want to call it. But still, it, it, it's been kind of forgettable. Even the Piplup has had more... expression than the fan B. I think the worst part about this, going upwards and down, is the music change. Like, if it just stayed with the same music, it wouldn't be too bad. But it keeps changing between the two tracks. Still think it merits an emo- What do you mean, garbage? My emoji are good. They're really good, I reckon. I 
you know, I was looking through them because I was running out of spaces. And I couldn't really think of that many that I wanted to remove. I couldn't think of any I wanted to remove. There was only a Kirby mode, which was literally just Kirby. Like, no memes behind it, it was just Kirby. So I was like, oh, I might as well remove that, because I haven't even played a Kirby game. Can I help you? Um, yeah. I'm pretty good at making emoji. This doesn't take too much longer. This is very tedious. This might have to be a shorter stream than usual. Check the egg progress. I guess, um... Egg? Moves around. Must be close to hatching, supposedly. Uh, why shorter? Because it's earlier. I have things to do. food to eat and stuff like that. Also, I kind of want to try out like doing a long stream of my Minecraft mod pack. So I was kind of thinking of starting that after this. Between eat on stream, no. Is this really so gripping that you want me to continue doing it for another hour? This is my favorite stream yet. We go up. And then back down again. Up. And then back down again. Up. This is almost like one of those, you know, exercises they give, you know, to uh, like calm yourself or whatever. You know, the meditation breathing exercises. Uh, like, breathe in and then breathe out. But somehow I'm not convinced that this timing is what you'd want to breathe to. Can a venonat come out of this egg? Because if it does, I will be rather disappointed. Only mummy species. Oh, that's good. Come on, show me that. Huh? Show me that. Huh? Please. My audio filters certainly seem to be working. You probably haven't heard any clicking from my um, controller. It doesn't even look like it, it picks up when I tap on my controller anymore. So I am just completely free to do that. And it's fantastic. I love it. Then again, maybe it only picks it up when I'm talking. Which means that any rhythm I have while tapping on the controller, there it is, is lost. And that might even be more annoying. So who can say? 
Well, I mean, no surprises there. Renewal was going to come out. Yes. Um... Let's just name it... Oh... Dear. Does it at least have the egg move? Well, it does, so that's something. Uh... Well, it looks like he's got another egg for us. Maybe the next egg won't be quite so disappointing. Got plenty of eggs. <coughs> oh. Random tickle in my throat. Oh, that was horrible. I suppose it would make sense. Just don't know if I can be bothered or not. Uh, probably not. But what's the chances that I'll get another female? Besides, I'll have to do this a few times anyway. Before he actually shows up with another egg. I mean, technically, yes. Don't you bring math into my stream. See, look, he's not there. And now we've lost valuable cycling time. Don't you use math statistics and facts to disprove my arguments? Shut up. I will find a reason to criticize you. You exist to be criticized. You hear me? Why do you think I have chat on screen? I can take every silly thing you say and call it out for how dumb it is. Truly, I am the master of all things. I don't know where I was going with that. I really should just turn off chat on screen. It would make things a lot easier. It's always really obvious when I'm ignoring something stupid you said. But if it never appeared on the stream, then the average viewer who was watching the VOD would never have a clue. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a good thought? Check the data. Oh. Why so demanding? Look, nothing. At least I have another reason to do this anyway, in that I need Togepi to get happy so that it will evolve and then replace the Noctowl. Ricardo's getting happier. I thought only the first Pokemon in the team got happy. Oh, 
I always thought it was only the first Pokemon. Maybe you should look this up while I just keep plugging away at this, keep grinding away. You got any news for me? No, of course not. Why would it only be... Why wouldn't it be? Remnant of um, when it was... Only Pikachu getting the happiness? No, sometimes game mechanics can be very arbitrary in design choice. Well then, I guess I am mistaken. I guess I didn't need egg up front after all. At least that probably means that he's already happier than I might have assumed. From having been carried around most of Johto already in the party. I think he was in the party up until we did the... Um, Mahogany Gym, which was when we had to switch up some Pokemon to actually take on the gym with. But other than that, he's been all around. Any Pokemon that hatches from an egg has increased stats. So, it may well be that he already has enough happiness to evolve? Is that too much to hope for? I feel like it probably is. I remember all too bitterly the utter misery of making Pokemon evolve by happiness. I remember my Leaf Green run. You know, the original, the Poison Monotype team run. Where I spent ages, probably hours, just doing this exact tactic, cycling around on the longest path, longest straight path I could, to try and evolve my gold map by happiness. Only to discover, after I got frustrated and given up, that Golbat can't even evolve to Crobat and Leaf Green until you get the national decks. So I had been wasting my time, because he was probably already maxed out on happiness. But he still couldn't evolve, because I didn't have the national decks at that point. That really hacked me off. More so, because the only reason I actually actively wanted Crobat so badly was because Golbat and Zubat can't learn fly in Gen 3, but Crobat can. So I wanted a flyer on my team, and I couldn't get it because of the frickin' arbitrary National Dex bullshit. It's funny how, when I play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, I'm always reminded heavily that actually, oh right, this game isn't perfect. There's lots of flaws that I notice now I'm playing it. And actually, I don't like it half as much as I used to. But then, when I'm playing an, a main game Pokemon, a main Pokemon game, I'm thinking, wow, there's so many flaws with how they do main Pokemon games. BMD did everything so much better. The duality of Pokemon. I literally just did that, yes. That was the first thing I did when I came into the city. Was give Togepi a haircut. Up, then down. Okay, what state is the egg at? 
Uh, well, it's quite close then. Doesn't really give us all that much information anyway. Oh, good, there's another egg. We could poke more like Steelix a haircut. Um, with great difficulty, I expect. Look at me making jokes that totally haven't been told a thousand times before. That was sarcasm, if you couldn't tell. Why Ricardo? Because he's the only one without an item. And I can't be bothered taking items off. He benefits from it. Well, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along, mate. He won't be in there for very long. Chances are the next... The um, egg... The second egg we got... Will be... Desirable. It would still be unlucky. I mean, it's a 25% um, chance to get two females... From the eggs. I know that's not exactly how statistics work. I know it's like a freaking statistical fallacy to say, well, this has already happened, therefore it's more likely to get these outcomes. Yeah, I know it's a fallacy because they're independent things. But still. Oh, there goes... So it is 6pm. There goes night time. Oh, wow, just as well I started... I uh, got on with catching Lickitung. Let me stick to my statistical fallacies. Who knows? Maybe the universe does secretly work like that. in the number four. That, that's the best answer I can give to your question. Four is always the answer to any mathematical question. Except when it's not. Why not move two spaces to the left? Then we go into the grass. I misread that at first. I thought you said to get more crying room. I was like, that's a bit morbid, but not entirely inaccurate. There we go. This can be Carfagius. Or should it be y Yamask? I'm aware that it's misspelled, but honestly, I like this better.
I mean, that's pr pretty much how I pronounce it anyway. That's Cofragius. That's what I pronounce. So I think that's more accurate. <laughs> it's a better name. Cofagrigus. Oh, hey. Hello there. Thanks for following. Wow. What part of this was interesting enough to follow? I've literally been cycling up and down for the last 10, 20 minutes. Um... I have a suspicion that I can afford taking the XP share away from Saki Saki. I know, it's a terrible name. Yes, give that back. Oi, I thought I already told you. No making jokes. I'm the streamer. I'm the one who's meant to be funny. If I'm not funny, then you're not allowed to outshine me. Ah, we don't need Ricardo. Not yet. Nah. Look at this raticate. It's only level 24. We need Ricardo for this. We're in a dire situation indeed. Pity. Close, but no cigar. Ow. Ah, oh, and the flinch. I probably should have given the XP share to the Yanma, to be honest. Did I take... I did take um, Tangler off the team, didn't I? That's not ideal. Should I keep Megalon as Bayleaf? Given it that it's... better than Meganium. And look at this thing, it's more adorable. No. Didn't I add a bay leaf emoji to this Discord? Specifically because bay leaf is more adorable than Meganium. I mean, we all know that Chikorita is the most adorable, but bay leaf is a suitable substitute. I just want to hatch the other egg. Did add a Grovel. Well, there you go, that's Mystery Dungeon. Mm. I need to take Megalon off the team at some point so that I can replace it with the Tangler. But if you insist, then I will wait until it evolves to make gaining. Could be painful. Hard to tell. Okay, no, no, mind. Oof. I hope that does. Nope. Okay, Saki Saki is proving to be kind of Saki Saki at the moment. I'd better switch before it gets blue in one shot. After all those leers. I might not actually have any physical attacks. It seems to have glare, leer, bite, and who knows. 
Maybe Arbok is just kind of tanky. Okay, hopefully. Cross fingers. Aw, oh, come on, what? How are you still not happy? Okay. I'm gonna hatch the other egg. Because at least then I can get rid of it and put it in the, t the PC without feeling too guilty. And I can get Togebi some extra happiness. And then we can get Ricardo and we'll all be Gucci. Pretty sure it was you on you who got me saying Gucci and I kind of hate it. One of those things which I started saying ironically and now I say it unironically. And it kills me inside every time I think too hard about it. Yeah. Look, he's already got another egg. <laughs> um, I don't think I'll be getting that egg somehow. There's enough Yanma in the world. I probably should take them out of the daycare and put something interesting in. So that we come, can come back at the end of the game and just find like a level 100, I don't know, magic carp or something. Something suitably meme or I don't know. Funny thing is, we had a swarm notification not all that long ago in this game. Archie telling us about Swarm of Yanma. I should probably delete his number, to be honest. He's getting annoying. And it's not like I need the swarm notification anymore. How close is it? Need more time. Oh. Ugh. Well, the best things in life need time, I guess. Still, this is pretty awful. There's literally zero reason for me to be doing this. Yeah. Yeah, apart from personal guilt that I'll be putting a egg to sit in my PC for the rest of the game. To sit unhatched. Could I live with that kind of guilt? Knowing that I'd ex assen e essentially condemned an unborn Pokemon to remain in limbo for the rest of eternity. I don't think I could. And that's why I'm doing this. Also, is the game looking a little bit janky on screen? I don't know if it's the scaling or what, it just looks a little bit crusty. And that all the box. Uh, I guess you're right. I don't know, I like to think of it as the, um, the anime version where they all get sent to Professor Oak and he, he lets them roam wild in his little garden. And they all live happily ever after. I mean, there's not zero reason for me to be doing this. I'm doing this for the Togepi. 
I think that's as good a reason as any. It's not just the Yanma. The unborn Yanma. Any second now. Probably. Well, how about them Game of Thrones then? That's a totally PG topic to be bringing up on this stream, eh? But yeah, um, how about it? Have you been watching the new season? New episode coming up tomorrow? Though I'll probably watch it on Monday. Nothing has been happening. I guess not. It's all been built up. Still, I've seen some things that have made me excited again about the series. There's been a lot of theories I've seen so far that the Night King is going to split his army and while you know, he sends off like a smaller portion to attack Windfell and distract them, his main force is going to head down to King's Landing. And I think that would be a really, really cool way for them to take it. Because, I mean, otherwise, you know, if they... There are only really three outcomes I can imagine. There's the Night King wins, and our, our heroes either die or ha are forced to retreat. Or the heroes win. But then the Night King's already lost, and we're like on episode 3, so unless the battle literally takes up the rest of the season. But that would be an extremely tedious season, and it would be like a three hour long battle scene. And I know they said it was like longer and more ambitious even than Lord of Rings Helm's Deep, but even that didn't go on for like an hour. And the third option is obviously that the heroes win, or I guess they could lose, but it turns out that they were only fighting a portion of the Night King's army. And I think the third option is actually probably most likely, at least from a storyteller's perspective. I mean, obviously they can't win yet, they could potentially lose, but it would be extremely grim. And I mean, how could they win after that? How could they win after a devastating loss where pretty much they all lose? Oh yeah, we already know that the ending is going to be bittersweet. They've said so, and I mean, that's just the style of the show and the writing. I don't think Littlefinger's alive. I think they killed him off just because... They didn't know what to do with him. I mean, it's clear they don't know what to do with half the characters anyway. I mean, look at all the characters they've shown in the first two episodes of this season. Half of the characters that have been on screen, the show writers obviously have no idea what they're meant to do with. That These characters have just survived for so long. And now they don't know what those characters are meant to do, so they're going to kill off a bunch of characters, because that's the only purpose they have remaining. Good to find a hair face. Varys. Uh, well, maybe Varys. I mean, there was that whole scene, what, in season seven, I think, or season six, where Melisandre predicted that both she and Varys would die in Westeros. Here we go. Also, Melisandre obviously needs to return. I guess there's a theoretical fourth possibility that Melisandre comes you know, out of the blue with, like, an army of red priests or whatever, and they use fire magic to ward back the White Walkers long enough for 
the heroes and, like, a portion of their army to retreat from Winterfell. I don't think Stannis will survive. Let's call this Lelnew. I've probably already got a Lelnew, to be honest. But yeah, I don't think Stannis survived. I know they didn't actively show his death on screen. But... They would have shown him surviving by now. And at this point, I just don't think there's any... Room for him to have survived, you know? Like, what's he gonna do? He's gonna come out of the blue and freaking say... Okay, well, we've got two Targaryens back, but I still want the throne. Like, what's he gonna do? He's not gonna s just lie down and swear himself to John or Daenerys, is he? Well, unless, like, they show Stannis at the end of the show as, like, a post-credits cutscene where he's just, like, in Essos having a beer or something, and he's, he lives happily ever after despite all the misery. Um, so what do I want up first? I think Sucky Sucky still. I should probably heal, actually. That would be an ideal move before going back in. And uh, maybe buy some more potions? We can finish off the radio tower today. Another theory that I saw that I find quite interesting is the theory that Cersei and Jaime are not actually Lannisters. That they're bastards born from the Mad King and Tywin's wife. I mean, there's been tons of theories that Tyrion is actually, like, a secret Targaryen. But at the same time, I agree with the people who disagree with that theory, who say that it would kind of undermine his entire plotline to make him a secret Targaryen. Because his entire storyline has been based around he is the true son, he is the true heir of Tywin Lannister. He shares a lot of Tywin's characteristics, more so than Jaime or Cersei do. So, if they pulled something and made Tyrion not a true Lannister, if they made him so that if the man he thought it was his father, like Jon, wasn't his father, that would just be so weak and it would undermine... Uh, I, th I think Tyrion is a true Lannister, and I I don't particularly believe all that much in the theory that Jaime and Cersei aren't Lannisters, but I think it would be a nice twist if they did go that route. I mean, people have been theorising about the three heads of the dragon for the entirety of the books. They've always thought it referred to three people, and not just the three dragons. So if they do have a third secret Targaryen appearing in the show, who's it going to be? Nothing else really makes sense other than maybe Tyrion, Jaime, or Cersei. Well, I mean, not Cersei, because she's never going to side with the heroes. But Jaime is sided with the heroes, so maybe. Maybe he's the one that embraces it. I should have switched. Can't be the twins. Why can't it be the twins? I mean, funny thing about Jamie and Cersei is that... Yeah, they're twins. They can both be... Bastards. It's just that Cersei doesn't need to be ahead of the dragon. But yeah, funny thing about Jamie and Cersei 
is that it is stated in the books, if I remember correctly, that on the wedding night of Tywin and his wife, the Mad King takes his wife before Tywin gets to her. So, like, there's actual decent evidence to suggest it's a possibility, at least. Ceres? Ceres is dead. Though not quite as dead as the other Aegon, young Griff from the books, who in the show was never alive. So I've seen some my screen cameras. This is the part where I, if I had the bother, if I cared enough, I would put up my Elijah Wood. No. Video. He still hasn't evolved. Right, I'm taking this. You know who needs XP? Cofragius. He needs XP. Not stupid egg who refuses to evolve. Come on. Dude. So who do you think will die anyway? At least in like the next episode, who do you think will die? Or, well, if not the ep next episode, if they, like, stall it out with some BS, who do you think will be the first to die when the deaths start happening? I feel like it's a good shout that Jorah will die. Jorah Mormon. I think Theon is quite likely to die. Who do I think is Azawaha? It's probably got to be John. I know it's boring, but... Oh, sweet die. I think Gendry will probably die. Oh yeah, Brienne's gotta die. Her storyline's gone way, way too well. I mean, you say it's too obvious, but... I mean, it's taken us a long time. It's taken us the entire duration of the books to get to that. So it's not that obvious. It's only become obvious now. And I feel like if they pull any... You know, they can't pull too many twists this close to the end. Are ya? Maybe. I'm curious to see what... Arya's role is. Such a merry suit. Eh. Not that big of a merry suit. See, I reckon... Because a, a big part that has been glossed over in the show of the... the... the, the prophecy of Azura High, or, you know, the story of him, is that he gets his legendary flaming sword by forging it and then quenching it in, you know, in the blood of his lover. And he kills her in order to make the sword. So I think there's a decent possibility that that refers to John killing Danny. Unless, of course, it's the other way around and Danny kills John. But then she'll probably have to die. I really don't think she'll ever take the Iron Throne. I haven't fought it for many, many seasons. Simply because she really is starting to resemble the Mad King a little bit too much. And I think that's intentional. I think that's what they always intended. That Danny will slowly resemble her father, but it will be so slow that nobody realizes 
until it becomes a major twist. Anyway, this is going reasonably well. Hopefully Sucky Sucky gets better with some XP, some EVs, some levels. Currently he's a bit miserable. Reanimated Caldrogo. It's amazing, like, the things people theorise about. Like, there's been some people who have theorised that Cal Drogo will return because um, Miri Mazdur made a prophecy with her, you know, basically saying the equivalent of hell, f hell will freeze over before your husband returns and before you'll ever be able to have children again to Danny. And people think that means it's a prophecy. Oh dear. Uh, that's not a good amount of damage. Um, okay, maybe Ricardo can save us from this muck who has already raised his defense. We do not have a wonderfully powerful special attack team. Night King can more than just meaningless. Eh. Hard to know. Mysterious of forces. I guess that works. Not precisely what I was trying to heal. Outcome. What? Zero for out. Oh. I thought you were going to say Yodu is as a high. Mm. A warrior is not the way of a Jedi. But for this, I will try. Wooden Sword Ignites. <laughs> I think he's another one whose death was never shown explicitly, but he did die. I mean, they probably just like taunting us, right? I mean, George is probably the same. He just likes taunting the reader by saying, hey, this character you like might be alive because you never saw them die. But actually, he just intended for them to die, and they won't be coming back. <laughs> the thud was a metallic... Do you really think they put that much effort into it, that they were like, Well, um, w w this character's gonna come back, so we need to make sure that the thud people hear implies that he survived. I don't think they put that much effort into it. Uh, anyway, Ricardo's now dead, so that's not good. I mean, self-destruct. Let's start getting in intensely nonsensical. Speaking of Ned Stark, however, have you seen the theories that all of the dead bodies in the crypts of Winterfell, the dead Starks, are going to get reanimated. Because that was a very, very, like, cool observation that didn't occur to me before it was pointed out. But, you know, now I think about it, yeah. So I don't know why I didn't use Fire Punch.
for it. It does raise a question because you know, if Bran can Bran can walk around, right? So if there was danger from this, then he would know, right? So who's to say that the reanimated Starks will be a danger? Who's to say that they won't actually turn out to be fighting for the good guys? And it'll be a battle of the dead versus the dead. So this is not great. Bran walked into Jamie to push Bran. I doubt it. Usually when Bran walks into a person, it it's like noticeable. Like, okay, the thing with Hodor was an accident. You know, he didn't mean to drive Hodor insane. But even so, like, there's, um, in the books, there's talking about people walking into others. And, you know, the person who gets walked into is aware of what has happened. And they're like, they fight against it. So I don't think Jamie could have had that happen to him and been just completely unaware. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, if he had walked into the Night King. I think that would be a good plotline. Body slam. Better than headbutt. Wait, I don't have headbutt. I have cut and strength. God damn it. I can't learn. I can't learn body slam. Rip. Rip. Rip arena. Uh, unless I get rid of Reflect, but then... I suppose I have Hoot Hoot with Reflect. Oh, whatever. You didn't tell me yes or no fast enough, so I went with yes. Foresight. Why would I ever send this thing out to fight ghosts? Okay, what do I have that can still fight Magnemites? Not a lot. Great. Yeah, I I do agree. I think the theory that Bran walked into the, the Mad King is quite likely. That something about Bran's walking drove the Mad King to say why he did this. I'm not entirely convinced that he did it purely to set into motion events. I mean, surely a just, stable Targaryen kingdom would have been preferable for fighting against the White Walkers than the mess that they had. So what possible reason would there have been to make the Mad King mad and then cause the events that led to the story where everyone's killing each other. I feel like I need a Pokemon named Azura High now. <laughs> Probably. I've always thought that the warging was kind of like a weaker version of what the Night King does with you know, his control of the Whites. So I've always kind of assumed that Bran will learn to control the Whites or take over them in the same way to the Night King. But we haven't seen any evidence of that yet, so I don't know, my theory is weakening on that. I think it was significant that Bran and Tyrion had a long conversation in season in episode two, the last episode. I think Bran will have told Tyrion something significant, and it's possible that Bran will actually die in the upcoming episodes. 
and it will be left to Tyrion to reveal, like, the vast secret or whatever that Bran has been keeping from everyone else. I mean, he can change history, because he, you know, made Hodor retarded. He was able to contact his father, though only dimly, by, like, calling out. So I think he does have the ability to change the past. Or, well... Yeah, I mean, that, that is the question. Does he change the past? Or is it predestined that, you know, because the effects of him changing the past have already come into action, that he is forced to use his powers to ch change the past in exactly that way? I mean, that's probably what they're talking about when they're like, he's no longer fully human. You know, he's no longer a man, he's more a force. You know, he's being controlled by, I don't know, magic forces outside himself. Bran is Bran the Builder? Eh, unlikely. Some people have theorised it, I don't. I think it's like... I don't think it's... I think it's a nonsense theory. It's when people go a little bit overboard with... names and stuff and start... seeing things where they aren't there. It's weird that the books have... no, oh, you know, the show has got so far away from the books is that like there's so many things in the books that have been set up that you don't even see a shred of like there's entire theories like um that there was a lannister who well in fact there was the theory that one of the women in essos that Tyrion was going to meet or, you know, was likely to meet was actually his first wife, Tisha, or whatever it was. And there was also a theory that there was a Lannister who, I don't know, sailed away, like, shortly before the events of the story, sailed to Ver Valyria to look for the Horn, I think? He sailed... Oh, no, he sailed to try and find the, the Lannister air sword because a long time ago a Lannister who had a Valyrian sword which was the sword of their house went near or to Valyria and never returned and so there's the theory that this guy who went to look for this missing heirloom ended up in Essos and has been referenced yeah, I think um, the theory was that he is the masked man or something, like the leader of the stone men in that area that Jorah and Tyrion sail through, where everyone's affected by the stone sickness that drives them mad. <laughs> the retirement. I mean, you've definitely got to hand it to George R. R. Martin. Whether you like his writing or not, he does a great job at leaving open just enough hints and possibilities of plot lines that you keep guessing. But at the same time, they're not plot holes or anything. They're not mysteries left open that the, will bother the reader if he doesn't expand on them. They're just there. And it's up to the reader to guess which ones are red herrings and which ones are the ones which will make more of an appearance in the future books. 
Do do I believe in the alien dragon zoo? Uh not really. I think it would be kind of shitty writing. That's the theory that like um the dragons came in a meteor from out outer space and the impact drove the planet off its course and that's why there's long summers and long winters and you know, years are messed up even though they have record of how long a year lasts. I think the fact that they have concept of a year is merely just for this you know it, it's just almost bad writing but it's more of just a compromise than that it's hard to explain time if you don't have a clear-cut way of expressing it. I don't really think... Oh, how that they come from? How old was the cat? Well, they'd be the same age. Oh, that's the whole point. The years are the same length as our years. But I, I believe that that's purely a writing device to help us understand the passing of time in in world. I don't believe there's like an actual lore explanation for why they would have that concept. I think that's just Dothraki superstition. I don't think it's like a hint that is going to be expanded on. I will say, I'm kind of disappointed that th at least the show hasn't gone down the route that the whole point of A Song of Ice and Fire was that it is both the forces of fire and ice against the forces of humanity. Like, I always believed that it was going to be the case that Daenerys would invade with her dragons to the south and the Night King would invade to the north, and so the people in the middle, Jon Snow and whoever, is defending from both sides, both the fire and the ice. But no, Daenerys just kind of blindly leaves him. You think one character we assume dead is going to come back? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it probably would have been leaked anyway. You would have heard that an actor who you know, played a character who was formerly dead has come back. I mean, just look at what happened in season five or six or whatever it was with the Jon Snow affair. I mean, we all knew, knew he was coming back anyway, but nonetheless, the leaks came out that his actor had been seen on set. So I think if an actor had been see, you know, seen on set who would, shouldn't have been there, I own um, this is death by the way, we would have heard about it. Whether Carl Drogo or Sean Bean or Sirio Pharrell or whoever, if the character had been there, we would know. Why does hypnosis always goddamn miss? This is the first of six Pokemon. I feel like we may not beat this trainer. I feel like we have... Oh, come on. I mean, it was kind of obvious he was on a sliver of health. But still. So, basically, on zombie zero. No, that, that's... I'm sorry, no. I, I think that's just stupid. Okay, sure, they'd have the excuse of it. But nonetheless, it would be news. You would have heard about it. For the fact that we haven't heard anything... Ugh. 
opposite of you. I've lost this. Megalyn's not going to have enough health for us. Oh, come on. I do have revives. I'm going to have to revive Ricardo and hope that he can do something. These Crafragius is coming up to scratch soon. Uh. Well, I don't really want to get Egg killed. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a stupid idea, to be honest, on you. One last dancing mess lesson. Come on. Oof. One hit. Why is he your boy? I don't even know why people liked Ciro that much. Didn't do that much, he just taught Arya. He had a certain amount of charisma to him, but not that much. Not enough that it explains the Be like six nights with him. Uh, they weren't knights, they were regular fucking soldiers. Also, this is bad. But you ass. Should have expected that. Yeah, we've lost. We've lost hard. What can I do against? He's got a wheezing now. I might as well accept the loss. I've already lost egg, so spent all my money. The Pokemon that I most didn't want to faint, Egg, has fainted. Oh my god, get out of here! <sighs> right, I'm deleting that. He's so annoying. He's so, so annoying. Right, um, well we can grab some quick extra XP from right of Mahogany Town. We can even get our Sneasel, I think. If there's no blockage into the Ice Cave. Four. Um, who needs XP anyway? I'll tell you who does. Bangalore does. Now you know who's who was more charismatic than Ciro Farrell? The Red Viper. He was a good character. But he's definitely not coming back because he got his head smashed in. Same as Ned Stark, he got his head chopped off. Neither of them are coming back. I mean, they didn't even bring Catelyn back as Lady Stoneheart. What makes you think they're going to bring back some other random character? For arguably less of a reason. Also, you probably missed it, but I encountered Raikou. Charmeleon, fine. Forgot to surf for that. Sucky Sucky's got a good move set. It's just a pity he's not. Wonderfully good at utilizing it. I mean, his special attack stat is supposedly not that terrible, but in reality, it's not fantastic. Part of the reason why I 
never bothered using a Lickitung before. He's just... It's not a Pokemon with decent stats. Licky Licky may be better, but... Why would I use Licky Licky? Probably have a burn heal, right? Oh, I have full heals. No burn heal. Surprising, actually. The worst part is knowing that I need Kofragius to be not just on par with the rest of the team, but a higher level than them, because his moveset is always going to be dreadful. I mean, come on, Leech Life? Literally the weakest move in the game. Except it's not. Constrict is slightly weaker. It's the second most weak move in the game. At least in terms of straight up damage. And here I am. Almost at the usual length of a stream with no particular end in sight. I was hoping I'd be able to clear the rocket tower. But unfortunately that imposter had a surprisingly powerful team. So you don't get a shorter stream than usual after all. How do you feel about that? Happy? Stomp on that. Oh, come on. Don't give me this. He's just getting free hits off. Okay, now I have to blue in chain. Because he can't tank another hit. So whether or not he uses another sleep powder, I'm probably dead. Oh, that was a load of dicks. Get out of here, stupid butterfree. And a blossom, fine. Would have been nice to use Licky Tongue to take this thing out. Whoops. Um, freaking fantastic. Oh hey, solar meme. No, I'm gonna heal up Saki Zaki. And maybe if I play poorly enough, Nighthawk will provide the option. To me that I can switch to Licky Tongue. Never mind. I think, yeah, this isn't going to be an issue. I mean, look at the amount of damage it takes from Solar Beam. It's basically insignificant. It's like it goes through that animation, and you think, oh god, Solar Beam is going to hit me like a truck, but actually. It's more like a pea shooter. Or a tackle. No matter what they do, they'll be unfinished. Well, yeah, granted, because um, that's the issue that George R. R. Martin has with writing his books. He's trying to actually wrap up the plot lines before calling it finished. And so that's why it takes him so long. Whereas the show is just like, eh, we'll just cut a bunch of useful plot lines. I don't think anything will happen. I think the baby will just straight up survive. Gilly will survive. Sam will survive. But there has been a theory that 
the baby he is actually the like, the cause of the White Walkers coming south because they want to reclaim their brother. But I think that's probably the most absurd theory. What theory do you believe for why the Night White Walkers are doing what they are doing? Like, do you reckon they have a deeper motive than just wanting to eliminate all life? I kind of do. But I'm not sure what to believe. There was a nice theory that there was some kind of pact that was made originally. You know, similarly to how... You know, because this all stems from the war between the children of the forest and the first men. So a pact was made between the children and the first men to end the war. But the White Walkers were already made for that war, right? So presumably the same pact that was agreed between them, between the children of the forest and the first men, held to the White Walkers too. Unless they just completely were out of control of the children of the forest after being made. That's kind of a crap solution, in my opinion. But now, an explanation I can believe is that the White Walkers have redeclared the War of the First Men because the pact, whatever it was, the terms of the pact that they that was originally made have been broken. And so maybe what needs to happen, what the heroes need to do to win, is to re-establish the pact. To rectify whatever was done to break. I don't think they can get away with an ending where the White Walkers just win. I mean, they said it was a bittersweet ending anyway, so I don't think they've gone that route. But yeah, it, it would be dumb if they did that. Oh, the heroes just went. Yeah. I like how we're sliding around on the bike. Like this... Is completely safe. Hey, we got waterfall. We can teach it to the mantine, which I don't have on me. How do I get out of here? I need to, like, do this and then. That wasn't too hard. I kind of just committed to going through here. Might as well do it now. A red herring. How can he be, though? There's a literal army of the frickin' dead. How can he be just a red herring? An interesting final round. I mean, at least the fact that the wild deli birds flee saves me the trouble of fleeing from them. But they'd probably give good XP, right? So I'm kind of gutted that I'm missing out on some of this. Eh? Wait, I, I fucked up, didn't I? Well, that's what I think. I think... There's going to be a deeper motive than just, just because. I reckon there's going to be some kind of explanation for why the Night King is doing what he would do. I don't think, I think the, like, the fact that we've been told that the White Walkers got out of control, I think that's a red herring.
or we haven't been told that, but like it was heavily implied by the fact that they were killing children of the forest. Which was, you know, the thing that they were originally created to stop. Unless, of course, that was a red herring, and actually the children of the forest are going to reappear. Like, did we actually see them die in that scene? Did we see the children of the forest get murdered? Or did they just kind of... Children of the ruined houses. It's possible. I don't know how likely it is. Also, this would be a wonderful area to have no wild encounters in. But Pokemon don't flow like that, apparently. It's not like Golden Sun, where it actually gives you a break when you get to the puzzle areas. Damn, I really should finish Golden Sun. Good game. I think the fact that they keep saying a song of ice and fire refers to... No, I think the fire refers to the dragons and the ice is the dead. But I think it's red herring that people think it refers to, to um, John because he's Stark and Dra uh, Targaryen. I don't know. At any rate, I look forward to the episode this Sunday. I think it will be entertaining. No sneezes yet. Probably won't be the best episode we've ever had. Just like the season probably won't be the best. I mean, it hasn't been the best so far, but it probably won't be the best overall. Uh, I think that just did. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that was good XP. Okay, Deli Bird's worth it. Point taken. I mean, I don't want to criticise the writers too much, but I feel like there's a definite sense of the writers don't know what to do. Have I ran into any? I haven't ran into shit, but Golbats and Delibers. It's like you're not even watching. What's up with that? Oh, I hate freaking gold bats. And it's not even going to let me run because Sucky Sucky is too slow. But look at this shit. It's just confusing me and then biting me and it's annoying as garbage. Apologies for getting slightly impatient there. just being ludicrous. Uh, I can't even be bothered if there's any hidden items. God damn it! Better about a right. Don't fit the theme! Also, hi, Altru. How's it going? I'm having a garbage 
day in this garbage cave where there are way too many wild encounters and none of what I actually want. I haven't even seen a blooming pillars one yet. Let's go in there. Dude, that don't sound good. Should he wait? No? What? What? No. I know who the real... Oh, okay. I made it so obvious. Oh boy! Do share your wisdom with the, the stream. Ah, how kind of him. He healed us. Try that. I mean, I don't think he's gonna be, like, the main antagonist. I don't think he's gonna... They're gonna turn around and say, actually, this guy is the main antagonist. But I wouldn't... I wouldn't be upset in a universe where they did do that. I can see where you're coming from. But I don't think so. I think his motives have made sense. He just likes to play with death. And Cersei happens to be the one who has allowed him to do that. What about that doesn't make sense? Well, maybe... Or does it have to be that either is using the other? Maybe it's just the case that it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Which is entirely believable and in line with his character. He has benefited greatly from doing you know, Cersei's dirty work. And she obviously has benefited, benefited greatly from him. Uh, Outer, if you're confused, we're talking Game of Thrones. I, I sort of kind of got a bit too into it. Hang on. Hang on. What's going on here? Low IQ streamer can't figure out Ice Puzzle. Still no Sneasel and still no sign of a swine up either. How did I struggle with this? TM44. I don't know what that is, but it's probably not that worth it, is it? TM44. You are... Rest. No, that was a complete hot waste of time. Might have been worth it if we found a Sneasel. But the game is not playing along. On that route, unfortunately. I think we need the Tangler in the team. The Tangler would be able to tank a few self-destructs, I reckon. Eh, I don't really have any strong feelings either way. I don't think it's... stupid. 
Now, I don't think it's so ludicrous that I'm going to call you out on it. But at the same time, I don't think it's all that likely. It's just a solid eh. Eh out of ten. I hate Zubats. Oh good. Bag is full. Uh what can I chuck? I have a repel, but like what use is that? It's not gonna help quite how. Get out. I wanted to select Pokemon. What level is he? 25. Anyone know what level Sneasels can be found at? Tell you what, um, I'll look that up myself. It's just faster to look. Okay, so Crystal, Cave, oh. So Swine Up's only at day. And Sneasel is... A glorious 1% at level 22. Oh wait, it's 5% on second floor, 10% on the last floor. But either way, it's lower level than Saki Saki, so I won't encounter it with my repel. And just looking at Swine Up, it seems like it's always at the day. Yeah, you can't. In Crystal, you can't find Swine Up at night. So, don't really care. Okay, let's go back down then. Actually, um... Yeah. I've wasted that repel already. Thank God that's not a trainer. That would be dicks. We can go back down there. Just look for a Sneasel. 10% chance, that's fine. I mean, it's marginally better than Snowflake from Gen 4, Gen 5 even. Right, I'm going to sell the iron and protein, because, let's be honest, they're more valuable sold than used. I'm going to buy some hyper potions now, but I'm going to buy more revives, because I reckon those will be the most useful thing. I've got plenty of super pots anyway. There you go, repels off. Uh, having said that, I'm going to put it back on. Because I'm not going around that cave with no repel. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? It's this item. Keep you up. Oh, yeah. You mean fourth child? Well, it's strongly implied that she was lying. That she's not actually having another child. Or it's possible that she lost the child. I mean, um, the thing is, she refused to drink with Tyrion on the basis of having the child in Season 7, Episode whatever. But in the Episode 1 of Season 8, she was drinking. So either she lost a child, or she was lying. Because she's no longer you know, living her life caring for a, you know, the supposedly unborn child. She's you know, just lost it. 
Cool. Just need to get a little bit further and then we can look for our Sneasel. That one is not Danny. Probably not. But who can say? Zubat, fantastic. Not really. Who would be best for taking on a Sneasel? Well, it won't have any ice moves, so... Let's get Nighthawk up. And it will be fast enough to run away from all these stupid distractions. Gilly. That's who. Could be Sansa. That would be pretty lame, to be honest. But I mean, there aren't really that many others who can come out of left field. Just use Deli... I don't want to use Deli Bird. use Sneasel, because I haven't used either. But Sneasel is not another flying type, and it's more appealing. Do you know how many goddamn flying types I have planned for this team already? Way too many. See, here we go. Yeah. Well, Mes Melisandre is most likely going to die. She'll come back and then probably die in the same episode. Use Mewtwo. Then I add a Mewtwo emoji to my Discord. I don't know if you've seen those yet. I'm always happy when I add new emoji. They like add more life to my Discord. Sneasel, get in this Ultra Ball that I just happened to um, conveniently stumble across. Good. Ironic. Here I was earlier saying this will probably be a shorter stream than usual, and yet it's already been longer than most streams. So you're probably getting a longer stream than usual. Good. Yeah, just wake up. Wake up. That's exactly what I wanted you to do, Sneezer. I just wanted you to wake up. Go back to sleep. Now get in the bowl. At least I've got plenty. I mean, I have a far-fetched that could be used as a emoji, but that's really worth it. Didn't really do all that much. Yeah, it might do. There we go. Okay, give me a name for a Sneasel. Because if you don't, I'm going to name it by default Shadow. After Shadow the Edgehog. Actually, I could just call him Edgehog. That would be more f amusing. Snort. Uh, Edgelord is... Well, Edgehog. Edgelord would work too. Sne Snort and Sneeze. Fantastic names, guys. Fantastic. Let's call him Edgehog. We already had Booger. 
Okay, I can no longer get out of this cave. Where's my escape ropes? Oh, that's right. I don't have any. Save me from this nightmare. Hang on, I have a repel. I have max repels or something. Max, one max repel. That's good enough for me. I probably won't need them for victory road because I'll want the XP, but... But I probably ought to buy some more, just in case. Oh my god, just let me out! This cave is such a drag. Okay, we're good. We're good. We heal. We... I don't know, what do we swap out for Edge Elk? I don't know if we have a space. I wanted to get rid of the bay leaf for the tangler. This is a bit of an issue. And who do I get rid of if I get the Gligar? I don't know when I can get Gligar. I think it's this route, but I don't know when. It is good music, isn't it? There's some kind of charm that they were able to capture and... Oh, that's why I've had no encounters. Like, the 8-bit the or whatever it is, chiptune music held such a unique charm that I don't think any other game has been able to replicate any other game in the series. Maybe Gen 3 to an extent with its trumpets. They were a bit kooky. I was always disappointed with Heart Gold Soul Silver's remasters of the chiptune music. It just kind of fell flat. Uh, I'll tell you what. This is um, who uses the new Pokedex mode? Like seriously. Can't argue with the few there. I wonder where Raikou is right now. Oh, below Ecritique. That's too far away though. Doesn't appear that I've ever seen a Gligar, unfortunately. So I can't figure out exactly where I need to be looking. Yeah, I think that's the case. Because, I mean, during Gen 1's soundtrack, it barely used any drum instruments. Presumably because they just ran out. You know, they had so much complexity. I mean, this has no drums. This battle theme. So I guess there's just... The other instruments are doing so much. A, it doesn't really need it, and B, ow, B, it can't fit it with the limited sound set. Ah, oh, come on, that's lame. Oh well, unique chance to first see how well Cafragius does. Well, he did good at taking down that one matchup. I guess Megalon. I don't have anything else. Would have been nice to use my water type attack against this rock type. But oh well. At some point, I need to return 
to the rocket tower, radio tower. I just don't know if I can do it. My Pokemon haven't increased in that many levels since we failed. The only solution I can think of is that I need to go and fetch Handjob for another one last final time. I mean, how many final times have we been on so far? This must be the third or fourth final time that we're bringing back Handjob. It wasn't hard, it's just the imposter has like six coughings. Six level 30 coughings, which all know self-destruct. So even if they all use self-destruct on the first turn, he would be able to wipe me. But of course, he has to fight and make a fuss over it. I think, yeah, going down this route is a waste of time. I need to just drop one something that's not being all that useful. And get out something else. So I guess since Egg is refusing to evolve... I mean, Edgehog's not going to be useful anyway. But maybe Vine Source? No. Poison types. It's literally the only option I have. Well, I have the option, I guess, of the other, the Pseudo Widow. Yeah, Flat Moon. <laughs> We're not using Flat Moon. I'll keep hand job as purely a backup I need to heal I don't really want to deprive my team of XP I mean so long as Kafragius is alive he'll be getting at least some XP Regardless of who fights. Right, uh, let's try and finish this off. And then we can end shortly before entering the underground. Which, if I remember correctly, parallels another game that we did. That I've done. It was either... It might have been Liquid Crystal... In fact, if it is Liquid Crystal, that would be a very nice parallel. To end right before fighting the rival in the underground, in both Crystal and Liquid Crystal. That's just too nice not to do. Oh yeah, smoke screen too, so we can't hit them. These are some smoke on frickin' coffins. They always explode on like a sliver of HP. Burn. Fantastic. That's all I wanted. See? He's going to explode now. No? Okay then. Well, let's stick with Sucky Sucky while he's actually doing good. This is where the pain starts. Sludge does so much damage. It's a good move. Yeah. Flip 
very painful move. Pity. I would have liked another burn. I guess that was too much to hope for. Well, I'll try Megalon. Maybe it'll explode or something. I think Megalon could tank an explosion, but Sludge? Not so much. I mean, Megalon's virtually useless in this fight. Now, if I remember correctly, it was that lucky poison that lost me the battle last time as well. There's another coughing. Uh, try Ricardo. Still, I'm averse to try and do hand job, even if it's just to heal up Saki Saki. Look how close Ricardo is to the next level. I get the feeling that if I didn't do that, oh god, he's gonna explode. That's the problem. Like, two swifts will leave him on a sliver of HP from which he will just explode. So I have to now lower his defense in order to continue, except he's probably going to... No. That tackle allowed me to survive. Hopefully. Good. Oh, it was a crit anyway. You see what I mean, though? Train is hard, wheezing as well. After my Pokemon have struggled on coughings, he sends out a frickin' wheezing. And it was level 32, which is on par with my Apom. But it was higher than anything else I had. Bad news bears. Look at that damage. Tiny, tiny trickle of damage. I don't see how I have any other choice. I've got to go to Handjob and just give him a magnitude. Because Nighthawk does no damage. These things have high defense, Nighthawk has low attack, and he has only physical attacks. What a bother. I suppose this is what you get for using a substandard team. How many times have I said that? Anyone keeping count? Should have just used headbutt. At least five. Uh, let's stick with hand job. I've started, so I'll finish. Being too slow. And I would quite like to finish this up. Five. Doesn't even do half damage. It's risks of magnitude. Still a good move. Not as good as Earthquake, but then not meant to be. There we go. Thank you. Oops. And with all that said and done, we can wander back down, heal up. Rip. 
probably have given an epilepsy warning. But I could... Oh, that would be nice if I could catch them. I literally encountered Raikou and the, on the first turn before I even got to make a move. It ran, so I need like fastballs or something, if I have any hope. Anyway, um, here we are. I'm gonna save here. <laughs>